Hi everyone, I'm Miss Laura. I'm here in the corral with our Percheron horses. This is Goliath and this is Merlin. These two best buddies are enjoying their retirement here at the Leona Sadobe Museum in Old Town, Calabasas. And they're teaching our visitors about the essential role that Percherons played in the Old West. Percherons are native to the La Perche region of France. Originally used as war horses, ridden by knights in the Middle Ages, this adaptable breed eventually pivoted to pulling heavy mail and passenger coaches to and from cities and towns. The first Percherons arrived in the United States from France in the mid-19th century. Percherons grew in popularity quickly, and by the late 1800s through the early 20th century, they outnumbered all other horse breeds combined. Why was this breed of draft horse so popular? Well, lots of reasons. Admired for their keen intelligence and gentle dispositions, Percherons are both strong and agile. And you won't find a more versatile horse. This robust breed is extremely hardworking, with the endurance to trot at a fast clip for long distances while pulling large carriages through the countryside transporting pioneers on a wagon train or hauling heavy farm equipment in the fields. They were even used to bring the circus to town. On ranchos of the 1880s, like this one, a Percheron's duties were numerous and varied. They pulled all kinds of farm equipment, like this cedar for planting large rows of crops, this manure spreader for fertilizing the fields, and this hay dump rake for harvesting hay. Cherished rancho members, these draft horses also served as the family car, ferrying their household to the markets, shops, and social gatherings. Sometimes owners use them as riding horses to go into town or out to the range. Now you know why wagon train and stagecoach drivers, teamsters, and ranchers like Miguel Leonis favored this breed. Before the invention of cars, trucks, and tractors, Percherons helped power westward expansion. Generally black or gray in color, Percherons can weigh up to 2,600 pounds. That's about the same weight as an average car. Most impressively, they can pull up to two to three times their own body weight, and much more if they're pulling something with wheels. Now you know what the term horsepower really means. These horses are also very tall. Horses are measured in hands, one hand equals four inches. The typical Percheron is between 16.2 and 17.3 hands. To give you an idea of just how large these gentle giants are, let's compare an ordinary riding horse to Goliath. This quarter horse is about 15 hands high and wears a horseshoe like this. Goliath is 17.3 hands high and wears a horseshoe about this size. Over the centuries, Percherons have been bred to follow two distinct body types. Merlin is an example of the working Percheron. Notice that he's built low to the ground with heavily muscled thighs and hips with a level rump. These historic draft horses were bred to pull ever heavier farm equipment and ever larger wagons as agricultural demands grew. Later, some Percherons like Goliath were bred to become show horses. Also quite strong, show horses tend to have higher knee action with a graceful style. They're used for equestrian vaulting performances, hitch and wagon competitions, and fancy carriages in the city. When you're looking at our Percheron horses, see if you can notice the difference. Goliath and Merlin don't pull wagons at the adobe here today. So let's go someplace where Percherons do and see how they get hitched together as a team. We're at Underwood Family Farms in Moore Park with driver Gina. Hi Gina. Hi Gina. You have two beautiful Percherons here. Yeah. This one is Kirk and this one is Rex. They look so good together. Thank you. What does make a well-matched team? A well-matched team is two horses of the same breed. They're the same color. They are the same height. They are the same conformation. 
and they are of the same fitness. Um, that way they pull evenly. You don't want one pulling more than the other because um, that can cause injuries. And that's really what makes a well-matched team. I see they have all kinds of straps and harnesses. Can you tell us a little bit about how you hitch them up together? Yeah, so they're hooked up by their lines and they're hooked up together at the, in the middle at the cross lines. And the right line hooks up to the right side of their bits and the left line hooks up to the left side of their bits. And then you attach them to the wagon at the yoke, which attaches to the front and then also by the traces that hook up to the back of them to, to, so that helps them pull. And these are the traces here? Yes, yes, hook up to the back. yes. Let's take a look at the back. Okay. So I see the traces are hooked up here. What is this? So this right here that he's attached to is what's called a single tree, which you would have if you're driving one horse. But because we're driving two horses, we have a double tree. So there's another single tree over there. And then those two single trees are hooked up to an evener. And that is what's called a double tree. And what does the evener do? It just helps balance the load of the wagon as they both pull it. So if you have a lot of people in here, yes. for example, yes. you really need that to help them. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, are we ready to drive? Yes. All let's right, hop let's on. do it. So Gina, how do you drive these two big horses at the same time? So you drive them with these lines. As I said earlier, the right line is hooked to the right side of the bits and the left line is hooked to the left side of the bit. Um, and then to drive them, you just pull a little bit on the right line if you want them to go right, and a little bit on the left line if you want them to go left. And then to stop them or make them back up, you just pull straight back. You have to make adjustments for what the horses are doing and where you're trying to get them to go. And I notice they have these blinders on mm -hmm. over their eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, why are they important for the horse to have? So on? they're important because that so that they don't get distracted or spooked by something on the side of them and they just focus on going forward and listening to what I'm asking of them. And I see that all the harnesses are just beautifully decorated. Yes, here we like them to look uh, very nice and fancy. So these are technically show harnesses. They're just missing the show collars. Well, I think we're ready to go for a drive. Yes. Let's go. Gina, thank you so much and thanks to everyone at Underwood Family Farms for showing us how draft horses are harnessed together and driven as a team. Welcome. Now let's head back to the Leonis Adobe Museum and check on Goliath and Merlin. Back in the Old West, no other breed of horse could compete with a Percheron. Even today, these draft horses are still used on small family farms for logging and maple sugaring and they hold an esteemed place in the horse show community. So, the next time that you see a black or gray draft horse in a parade or pulling a hayride, it might be a Percheron like Goliath and Merlin. Members of a very special breed that played a crucial and historic role in our North American frontier. Thank you for joining us today. And if you'd like more information about our animals, or to learn more about the Leonis Adobe Museum, go to leonisadobemuseum.org.